call Monica Lennon to be followed by Tom Arthur. Ms Lennon, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you, just, just bear with me a minute. I'm sorry, I've just noted there was some clapping in the gallery. Now, um, I understand why people want to clap in the gallery, but it's not allowed in the Scottish Parliament. Thank you very much. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you to Jamie Halcrow Johnson for bringing forward this important debate. This follows a determined campaign by organisations representing both employers and employees, like Select, Unite the Union, the National Inspection Council for Electrical Installation Contracting and Electrical Safety First, um, to secure official legal recognition of qualified and competent electricians in the interest of public safety. Uh, as the convener of the cross-party group on construction, this is an issue that I've uh, come to, to learn about and feel passionately about, um, so I'm glad to be taking part in the debate today. Because whether in the home or in the workplace, people deserve to be safe. Like 93% of the Scottish households are surveyed by Select, I expected any person claiming to be an electrician uh, to have training and achieved qualifications. It is staggering that, in effect, anyone can call themselves an electrician and undertake work they're not qualified to do. This puts everyone at risk. Badly installed or maintained electrical work creates a significant risk of fire and other risks such as electrical shocks. And government statistics show that 69% of all accidental fires in Scottish homes are caused by electricity. These safety risks may lie dormant for months or even years. These silent killers can strike at any time. It only needs a set of circumstances to combine to trigger it. An unregulated electrici electrician sector makes it more difficult to hold rogue traders accountable. And people are left to foot the bill of correcting unsafe electrical works. Now, I'm the daughter of a health and safety officer, so I don't really need to be convinced of the health and safety case for regulating electricians as a profession. And I, I listened to the remarks from, from Claire Adamson about concerns by, by some in industry about the, the burden of bureaucracy. And I'm reminding of the, the saying that we're here to remember the dead and to fight for the living. Good employers who work with trade unions uh, to improve health and safety don't see that as a burden. It's about people's human rights. And too many people have died in workplaces for us to be complacent and allow conversations to drift on. Scotland has world-class roots. I'll take the intervention. Clear Adamson. Taking the intervention. Just, just to be absolutely clear, um, it, it's not that the, the I think any of the paperwork would be unnecessary. I'm just, I was just pointing out that there are other ways of of recording and achieving things that are cheaper and easier to do now. It wasn't a suggestion at all that there should be any um, a diminution of the health and safety aspect of what should be happening in there. Indeed, the cross-party group Maximum Redemption have discussed this on many occasions, and I invite both members to come along and hear some of the testimonies at that regarding this very issue. Monica Lennon. I'd be happy to do so and I think people should feel reassured because regulation of professions is commonplace in the UK. For example, I'm a chartered town planner, that's a protected title. There are more than 100 regulated professions already and yet there is no protection afforded to electricians. Um, regulation can spread best practice and facilitate ongoing training, these are good things. And this will become of critical importance when the new 18th edition of the writing regulations comes into, or wiring, sorry, wiring regulations comes into force in January next year. They raise standards markedly and introduce new and more complex technical requirements to ensure safety. Regulations will ensure that electricians are properly qualified to meet these higher standards and assist with training. In conclusion, presiding officer, I join the many organisations in the sector to call on the Scottish Government to to not delay and to use its powers to impose protection of title for electricians. There is a clear case for this and Scotland can lead the way in the UK on this issue and in doing so help ensure that people in Scotland are kept safe and skilled workers are properly recognised for the vital job that they do. Thank you. Thank you.